Hey guys, what's up? It's Heather with the Mosco, and today we're going to be planting up the containers next to my garage door. I've talked about before that um, these containers are in a high traffic area. This is the door that I walk in and out of every day, so I love changing these out seasonally. I also love doing something fun in here, and this we're going to file under experimental at best. So last year I had a hydrangea and some um, hostas and hookah in here and they did really well and I really liked them but I wanted to do something different this year something with a definite color scheme and um, I went to the garden center I either wanted to do like light blue icy blue like this with dark colors or all different shades of green and white and when I got there probably my best option was all shades of green and white but some of these things are supposed to get more sun than they're going to get right here. I mean, this is sun to part shade. This is pretty well a full shade spot. Begonias will be just fine. Um, we've got some Dichondra Silver Falls, which says it wants sun, but I've seen people use it in shade. So maybe, um, maybe we'll find out how it works out. Worst case scenario, if it all just dies, um, we can just go get a bunch of hostas and fill this sucker up and call it a day. So that's my backup plan, um, kind of expensive fail, but that's, you know, sometimes how it goes here on this channel. We're not about telling you how the perfect way to do things. We're just about trying stuff together and seeing how it goes. So we live in East Tennessee. We are on the border of zone 7A, B, like my town. Some of it's in A and some of it's in B. Um, so we're gonna pull these old plants out this is my spring stuff. These violas looked really good until they got shop vacked. Apparently, you know, plants are super resilient, but you put a shop back to them, they will not make it. And uh, there were some amongst us that thought shop back being mommy's plants would be fun. So that happened. So we're probably just gonna speed this up. Um, well, before we do that, let's talk about some of the um, stuff that I brought up here to use. I don't know if I'll be using all of it, but I just thought it was a really nice blend. So we've got a fern. This is a Kimberly Queen fern. I don't think it's a perennial, but I thought this would be a nice thriller in the center of the back for us. I also thought I really like this and it doesn't match the color scheme at all. This is a Red Rooster Carex, but it's super pretty. And if it works in here, we can keep it for fall because it'd be really pretty with our fall things. We've got some Dusty Miller. I've got several of these because I really like this color up here with all the green, thought that'd be pretty. Some Dichondra Silver Falls for our trailer, especially out of our big pot. I thought that'd be really pretty. And then there's this fern here. It is a plumosa fern. I know nothing about this. An asparagus fern gets two to three feet tall, three feet wide, part sun to shade. Beautiful, beautiful fern. I got several of them. So if this is a perennial, oh, it can climb. Okay, we just find out what this does together but it's so fluffy, it's so fluffy, it's so cute. So we got some of those, because I couldn't resist. This was really an, I'm gonna try to stay in the same color scheme, but I'm just picking a bunch of crap type of deal at the store. Um, and then I've got this nonstop white begonia. I thought this was really romantic and pretty, super pretty, love these flowers. I have not had success with begonias before, or impatience, I feel like anything that's got like this really thick watery stem. I don't do well for some reason. I got another fern. I thought that'd be really fun in this front pot here. Um, fern, you know. And the other thing about ferns is, you know, I do pretty good with ferns. They don't usually die around here. And then I got some diamond frost euphorbia and it says full sun, but I've seen people use them in shade. And I thought that would be really pretty contrasted with the fern ring around it. Here's some more of this. Then I got some of whatever this is. Didn't even look to see what it needs. It's like a hippo plant, but white, or a pink polka dot plant, I guess, but white. Four to six hours daily of sun. Huh. But I thought that was really pretty with these. I mean, that's really pretty, right? 
So then I got this fiber optic grass, which says part sun. I did get things that were at least not full sun for the most part. These, I just think this is a really pretty texture and I thought it'd be really pretty. Um, another thing that I have been watching is um, there is a channel called West Coast Gardens. It's out of Canada, um, but they have really, really beautiful containers that they jam pack full of lots of all the things and different plants like a whole bunch of different plants so i was kind of channeling a little bit of that especially for the big pot in the center and then the last most of this stuff is just repeats but the last thing i've got is some of these begonias here and this is a green a white green leaf sun or shade so it's really pretty as well. The leaves on these are a lot lighter green shade than the leaves on the other begonias I got. But I just think they're really pretty. Really pretty. So we're just probably going to speed this up. I'll set up a camera and we'll uh, see how this goes. And then we'll show you in the end. We got her all planted up if she grows in like she's supposed to it's gonna be gorgeous the colors are pretty just the plants need to fill in just a little bit of space and look lush like i said this is kind of experimental because some of these plants don't exactly love the conditions that they're in right here so hopefully that works out for us you will notice that as I was planting and I went to clean up, I left out a dang plant and had to come back in and replant it. So let's take a look around. On this side, we've got the begonias. I love these begonias the most and I wanted to put a couple in the major planter, so I only used two here. I did ring this one with some moss just to cover up some of that dirt. Hopefully it'll grow in and fill some of this up. Looks really good with this pot of Dusty Miller here. This one doesn't necessarily need to grow in, which is good because it probably doesn't love its life right here. If it can just stay alive, that'll be great. Then we've got the fern ringed with um, Diamond Frost Euphorbia. Diamond Mountain Euphorbia, one of the Euphorbias. Looks really great to have that ferny texture with the kind of ethereal looking. And then the white hippo plant or whatever it's called. Looking really great. That one doesn't need to grow in, just needs to stay alive. Looking beautiful. Got some more begonias over here. This one we put three in here, so it's looking good. This planter is definitely gonna be an experiment. So we've got our grass, and I think the grass looks good back here, but we'll see, I may take that out later. And our fern, fern probably needs to be tipped a little bit this way, but hopefully it'll grow in some and just bulk up and fill in a little bit more space. And then we've got three more of the um, Dusty Miller with two more of those really pretty begonias. Our Dichondra Silver Falls are the three trailers here. Got our fiber optic grass, another hippo plant, and these beautiful ferns. Like, I really love these. So we'll see how this works out because they look like they're supposed to get much bigger than what they're going to allow to get here. So again, obviously it's a much better situation because the plants haven't been shot backed. And I'm loving the monochromatic scheme here. The color scheme's really pretty. It looks lush. It looks cool. So we'll see how this grows in. Because right now that big planter looks slightly hot mess-esque. 
So that is going to be it for me in this video. I will give you guys some updates to see if this fills in and starts looking a little better. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.